guys, so by popular demand, these are Joey D and Tommy B's Tinder tips. Two disclaimers. Number one, we do not advise or condone the sole use of Tinder to get girls because if you're not constantly putting yourself in social situations where you actually have to speak to people in real life, it's likely that you're gonna become rusty and then when you do go meet people in real life, they're gonna be like, hmm, I thought this guy was cool, but now he's actually just an awkward fuck. Two. These are just our opinions. We don't claim to be fucking experts. We're amateur, maybe intermediate grafters, so it ain't gospel. If you can take something from it, do so. And if not, it's cool. We will begin with profile. So first thing you see on Tinder is your profile. So make sure that you've got a, a good diversity of photographs. Different shit on, obviously. Don't wear the same thing fucking three times. Don't fill out the whole fucking five photographs because it's just too keen. Just do three. Make it, make good, make it so there's good settings. You've got your girls in pictures. Make it look like you're a lively little fuck and they're gonna have a good time. If you're into the gym, good, but have it as another dimension. Don't just have everything um, of you. Selfies in a mirror. I'm, you know, here's me in the gym. It's just boring. So you know, three pictures, good range of fucking uh, backdrops. Wearing different shit. Pictures with girls in make you kind of look like you're not in a desperate situation. You know, you're in and around girls all the time. That's your comfort zone. Girls want to be around you. Maybe also make some think it's shit. This guy's a bit of competition. I'm gonna have to try a bit harder. Kind of relevels, relevels the dynamic a little. Um, secondly, you've got the profile. So. I can imagine there's some fucking hideous ones, right? You've got to just run something short, sweet, with a bit of humour, and keep it broad, man. Don't, you know, don't exclude people. Don't be saying that you're looking for fucking this, you don't like this, you know, I hate this. Don't be like anything negative is not good. So keep it good vibes, maybe like some good interests that you've got, you know, make it seem like you're, you're semi-cultured and you're there for a fucking good time. So, you know, Always, always just, you know, you gotta be looking as fun as possible. Obviously, now the Instagram is another element you can put on it. So, if you've got a good Instagram page, it obviously shows a better insight of what you are or who you are. Definitely get that linked up. With the pictures as well, if you're gonna go with Instagram, try not to make the pictures that you put on Tinder too misleading because they'll look at the pictures you've put on and they'll go onto your Instagram and it'll come alive shortly that you are more of a dog than you fucking made out within the profile so just keep it balanced because you know we've been on the other side before and it ain't fucking good mate when you turn up and they're literally 60 percent of the fucking uh, quality that you were assuming so yeah keep it realistic and just you keep it a fair playing field all, all the way throughout and you want to impress mate you know understated is better than overstated to start Okay, so once we get them matches through, we've got to roll with the dynamic and this is our personal preference for how we operate on Tinder and you have to put this across fast. Now one thing to realise is that there's a lot of girls out there who just use Tinder to entertain themselves, they're literally just here for the lols and they match and they get a bit of attention off some guys because they know there's going to be plenty of guys giving it to them but they've not really got any intention of ever meeting anyone and we don't want to fall into that category of guys who just like spend all our fucking days trying to get a bird's number and shit on Tinder and we end up just wasting our fucking time and before we know it, we're 40 and wanking ourselves into oblivion on a Friday night. So, you have to hit them with a direct approach from the fucking start. Open it. I always go with something light-hearted, jokey. It has to have some kind of sarcasm in it for me because that's just the basis of my humour generally and I feel like if, if people don't get that, then we're probably not going to get on that well anyway. It can come across as keen to go for a number straight away. However, you can kind of rephrase it, you can address that fact. Anything that you know makes you seem negative in any way, if you make a joke about it and show that you're aware of that, it completely disqualifies it. So for example, if I go in and ask for a girl's number straight away, and I feel like she might not be taking it, I'll be like, you know, I know that's keen, but I just prefer to call it proactive. Alright guys, so if any of these screenshots aren't on for long enough, just uh, pause the video and get a good read of them. So, here I'm going with a pretty standard, sarcastic, ridiculously honest opener there on the left. Um, and she's pulling me up straight away saying, oh, you're quick to the point, aren't you? And what I'm doing by calling it proactive is just turning it from what could be perceived as a negative trait 
i.e. neediness or being overly keen into a positive one which is being proactive which is you know part of your duty as a man to get what you want um, that got deep but yeah or you know I'm, I'm, uh, I don't want to waste time now because uh, I'm getting like severe lactic acid build up in my thumbs and so I gotta move quick shit like that You know, so I go in with something really light-hearted, fast-paced, pretty much ask for the number straight away. I throw up this, I throw up a couple of examples of my uh, general opener. I roll with this, a similar template. Sometimes I put different twists on it. Um, but this has got quite decent success rate for me, and so I'll put that up now. So here is my pretty standard go-to template opener. Um, I probably use this about 50% of the time. Other times I'll just make something up. Uh, before I start, I'll just say that obviously it doesn't have 100% success rate. I don't think anything does. Uh, there's plenty of instances I could have put up with it not working or just getting no reply. Um, but often it does go down well. And I copy and paste this in two separate parts just so it looks a bit less like a copy and paste job. Um, sometimes girls will kind of pull you up on that and be like, oh, you know, do you say that to all the girls or you definitely copy and pasted that because of obviously how epic it is um, to which I'll just completely deny it and say something like fuck that this is all original content content I wouldn't insult my intelligence by copy and pasting shit because you know I'm this fucking quick in real life speak to me on the phone you'll see that I'm a funny cunt without having to regurgitate old content um, but thanks for the compliment if you think it's good enough for a copy and paste I might start using it from now on or something like that basically a few examples here anyway so as you can see the idea is that we try and pull numbers straight away and that's just totally a case of efficiency you want to look at the return you get in, in on your investment and that's you know it can be a big time investment so we don't want to sit there wasting our time with those girls who've got no intention of fucking moving fast and um, now a lot of the time this will come off and if you're bold and unapologetic about it then you know it will work for you more often than not uh, I've had quite decent success with this but the thing is those girls who are scared of phone conversations and shit and they and they want to like get to know you and shit first they're probably going to be quite timid shy girls anyway and they're just not the ones that I want to roll with so I'm quite happy to let those slip by and lose those girls if she's an absolute worldie then I might spend a little more time on it. So here I should really have given a limit in terms of the number of messages rather than the time. So obviously you can see from the beginning time to the end time, this is over a long period. Um, obviously I've just gone away and come back to it. And This girl was basically an absolute fucking worldie and so I wanted to just hammer on the barn door with it for a bit and uh, try and persevere. As you can see, she's just completely ignored the first phone number request which girls will often do if they're not comfortable giving it to you a lot of the time they're not comfortable actually just rejecting you and saying no so they'll just ignore it obviously I'm pulling her up on this straight away saying don't ignore my phone number request again you peasant so she's fucking ridiculously tidy and I'm just showing her that I'm not threatened by this and I can have jokey insults with her you know and I'm not gonna be one of those sucky uppy lads who's just like in awe of a fit girl she is saying oh do you hand out your number that easily I could be an old man you know and I'm kind of saying well what what do you want from me here do you want like just the standard bog standard opener hey babe how's you do you know what I mean? I'm just being sarcastic saying, yeah, I think anyone who doesn't open with, hey babe, how's you, is a freak. You know, and she kind of gets what I'm saying there. Over the next page, say, you can see I'm throwing a little compliment, just saying, you are a fucking cutie, you know. And I've just been calling her a peasant, so I'm just doing a bit of, a bit of push-pull, really. And then, like you can see at the bottom of that final paragraph, just saying, you know, you need to see the full extent of my conversation skills, just being a confident motherfucker, basically. And finally, after a little bit of effort, it comes off. So, there we are. So, you go in unapologetically, try and get the number, and you may sometimes run into a sticking point, which is the whole, you have to work harder than that. 
and when they use the words work or it's not that easy that's when we need a turnaround paragraph or the sticking point paragraph which is going to be like getting you past that making it okay for her to give you her number because a lot of the time if if she if you put it across in a certain way it makes her feel like giving you her number is her losing it's like her giving in and so you have to kind of break that dynamic down if you do hit this sticking point you need a way to get over it and get over it fast and without bending to their will so you can see she's just trying to get me to jump through hoops i prefer a guy that says please and thank you you know as if she's doing me a favor as if that's as if i'm working towards getting her number which really i don't want that dynamic and so i'm pulling her up on that saying what as if it's a favor and then I'm, I'm rephrasing in a way that will suit us both because i don't want to you know just bend to her will but then again you do have to give her some kind of small victory, otherwise she'll feel like she'll get stubborn with not giving her, not giving you her number. Um, and so I've rephrased it, but obviously I'm not saying please and thank you, fuck that. Without falling into the trap of um, the traditional guy chases girl kind of thing, first you need to address her fears, which are, I don't want to come across as a girl who just gives my number out like that. Because if she did that, which is understandable, if she did that, she'd end up with a lot of fucking nerds texting her all the time, being like, hey babe, how's you? You know, when you're coming around, you know, you know and it'd just, be, it'd just be stupid. So you need to like, show that you empathize with her. So I'd say something like, obviously I understand you can't be going around giving your number to every guy who asks for it on Tinder, but I'm not every guy on Tinder, man. I'm literally just here for the fucking lols. And if I meet anyone cool, then that's cool too. But I won't do the whole guy chases girl thing. So you can see here she's saying, gonna have to work a little harder to get a gal's phone number though. Um, how about fuck that? How about I'll just use my superior intellect to co coerce you into giving me a phone number? You know, like saddling a fucking horse for the first time. Uh, I'm saying, I understand giving me your phone number so quickly it might feel like it was a bit too easy so I'm just empathising saying yeah I know it's not the standard procedure uh, but then I'm saying you know I'm not gonna work when it comes to this uh, and it didn't really take that much to be honest and she's just turned it around from gonna have to work a bit harder to what she actually meant was gonna have to write one more sentence so there we are. I won't chase you and I do not expect you to chase me. What I'm saying is, if we're both cool, we can hang out, have a cool time. Even if you don't want to give me a number, that's cool too, because I'm cool anyway. And make sure that you get across that you're not, you're not that bothered, you can take it or leave it. So here she's saying, basically impress me more, you don't have my seal of approval yet. And I'm thinking, well, you don't really have mine to be honest, I was just going to get your number and then ring you and then see if you do. So. I'm saying, you know, I'm not doing that guy chases girl thing. I haven't got time for it. You drop your number here. If you change your mind, I'll probably WhatsApp you tomorrow or something. If not, totally cool. This combo provided me with a couple of lols, so it's all good anyway. Just showing that I don't really give a fuck if she gives me a number or not, because I actually don't, you know? Like, I really don't, and I think you have to really not give a fuck, because there's going to be a million more. So, obviously, after that paragraph, oh look, complete 180, here's my number. Will be interesting to see if you've got time to WhatsApp me. Nah, that's pretty needy, man. So, you know, that's what we call tables turned. That's what we call flipping the motherfucking script. You know, and then a lot of the time, she'll sense that you don't have that air of desperation that a lot of other guys do have on Tinder. And so, if you leave it open like that, oh, it's cool, whatever, you can get back to me, you can, you can think on it, sleep on it, you know, check me fucking pictures again and have a little route through, see how fucking cute I am and then maybe you can get back to me in half an hour or whatever and a lot of time she'll, she'll turn it straight around and give you a number and I've got maybe a couple of examples of that. Where's the graft eh? Don't give my number out so easily. Alright, that's cool. You know, uh, it's fine. If you change your mind, I'll be here. Just not giving a shit, basically. And so she's asked me if I like challenges and uh, I'm saying, yeah, I do like challenges. I just choose which ones to take carefully because I don't, basically I don't think that getting a girl's number should really be a challenge, it should be me deciding if I think she's cool and her doing the same. It shouldn't be me trying to do anything, I'm just being Joe Delaney. Uh, 
and so I'm saying that I don't really do Guy Chase's girl. You know, I don't, I don't think it should be about work. Um, I think you probably want to give it to me, but you just feel like you should make it harder because then somehow it will make it worth more. Um, and she's laughing and says that, you know, that's not why, but obviously she's impressed with my um, powers of deduction. Um, and then she's saying that I might be some weirdo stealing other guys' photos or something. And so again, as before, I'm just empathising with her situation. Like, yeah, it is a risk. I understand that, you know, it, it could happen. I might be some fucking stranger who's going to start sending you dick pics immediately. However, I'm confident that the reward, you know, is good enough for the risk. And so I'm just saying, again, empathising, saying, I don't, saying, you don't know me, so I don't blame you if you massively undervalue the reward, you know, which is some involvement in my life. And here we go. Cheers, bird. You've hopefully got the number at this point. So it's important to actually keep up that momentum and kind of reinforce what you previously said, that you are different. So you need to make that phone call more or less straight away. So the dynamic is on this one is that a phone call is nothing to you. You know, ringing a girl is already a thing that a lot of lads wouldn't do. I have a penchant for phone conversations, tends to scare fellow members of Gen Y who stick to text, so she's just obviously showing that, you know, not many people are actually game for phone calls, so you kind of at least doing something differently right off the bat. So they'll be surprised the fact that you've actually plugged up the courage, or if you're, you're of that sort, who will actually just ring someone off the bat. So, you know, you need to make it casual, and you need to have a bit of energy for it, man, because this is like the crucial element. When you ring them, there, yo, you've got to introduce yourself as their boyfriend. Hello. Yo, Chantel. Hi. Hey. Hi. Yeah, it's your new boyfriend. You know, um, that cool guy you met on Tinder last night. <laughs> so it's Tommy B, your boyfriend. You know, what are you saying? What are you doing right now? Come in with silly amounts of energy, and you know, offer up some sort of kind of jokey kind of uh, you know invite to stupid fucking thing that you've just made up. Come come to a fucking park and eat warm jam butties with me, man. I like I like picnics that are trampled up and fuck. You know, it doesn't cost a lot, I'll make it. You bring a fucking rug. You know, something like that. Don't be offering them restaurant fucking food. It's being done far too many times. It's not original. And you're falling back into the norm. Yeah, it, the fact that you, you know, you've said that you, you, know, you value your time so much. You need to bring and keep it on your side. So, do things for free, like walks and shit, and just say you're offering park tours with commentary from Tommy V throughout, you know, uh, scenic fucking, scenic visits to a local fucking forest where you'll be refreshments and entertainment from Tommy V from this time, this time, just fucking stupid shit like that, you know. And at that point, they'll get that you're a funny guy and it'll just be your fucking company all, all the way throughout. And you won't, it won't even cost you a thing, man. So even say, talk me through your fucking availability this week, we need to make a collision happen. And it'll just be easy. And just, you know, that is the staple, the foundation set then. And I need to meet that girl in the next week. Otherwise, it's just dropped off, mate. On the back of that, we'll, we'll now show some of Joe's phone calls. You know, where you'll get that vibe where you're just ringing someone and it's the first phone calls after taking a number off these girls. So it'll give you a real insight of how to kind of behave on the phone and the kind of shit that you need to be saying is... Uh, <gasps> stop there. It's flies, man. And then what you're, what you're saying now. Yeah, nah, uh, And, uh, you know... Uh, so that's it, you're set. No, Good luck. Cut that off. Yeah. Done. Whatever, yeah. Grafter's log. Tinder Diaries. Tinder Diaries. Alright, Tinder Escapades continuation. Phone call number one. Subject, Emily. File, Rebecca. Uh, conversation three. Subject, <laughs> I don't know why I say this shit at the start of the month. <laughs> so, this one works at the zoo, man, so... Hopefully, she did mention something about like a free fucking like, holiday pass to the zoo, so... Hello? Yo. Hello. Yo, Emily. Hello. What's up, Liz? This is a one times moderately attractive young white male. <laughs> moderately attractive. 
do? I say moderately, I'm just being modest. <laughs> Hi, are you okay? Yeah, I'm good, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good, yeah, I just thought I'd um, ring you and we can like just start this whirlwind romance and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, how are you? Yeah, that's cool. You know, I did get a bit mad about it. I was like, you know, I was, I was thinking it might be over because you just took too long in the shower and stuff. But I'll just give you another chance if you promise to like behave. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to talk. I just want to, I just want to get this free pass to the zoo, man. That's all I'm in it for. It is, yeah, it's a long term plan, like, but you know, I've got goals, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a guy with ambition. There's no point in being modest, you're a good looking kid. You're so good looking, yeah, really good honestly, so I was like, that's not okay. Hey, like, on a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna disappoint you now because I'm nowhere near that, like, attractive in real life. <laughs> but on, on the bright side, I'm like a pretty cool guy in that, you know, like, generally, generally, like, um, funny and like wise and like charismatic and stuff. Oh, so you're pulling in with the cute curls yeah, and photos. That's and my plan. Like, surprise, check out this bad photo. Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah, I've only got like about eleven months left on my visa, so I'm thinking honeymoon periods take at least five. <laughs> oh I've got eleven months left here. Have you yeah, oh, shit, maybe we can go back home together and get a nice little house in the countryside and a spaniel. What do you reckon? Maybe that could, that could work, yeah. Nice little place in Cheshire and like a liver and white spaniel. Alright, so um, Sam, uh, I'm just sat like trying to get a girlfriend basically on Tinder. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Got um. How's that been working out for you? Uh, well, I don't know, you tell me. How is it working out for me? <laughs> you gonna be my new girlfriend or what? Forty dollars. I'm homeless, you know. Did I not tell you about that? Homeless. Yeah, oh, not like, not in the, um, not in the homeless sense. <laughs> Just. <laughs> you know, on the street. Yeah, so not homeless. Yeah, that was a, it was a wild exaggeration, to be honest. Quite a bit. Yeah, or like some would say a lie, but you know. <laughs> Five weeks of so coming up to six. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been homeless for the complete duration, basically bouncing around, like staying with mates and stuff. Yeah. You know, just like trading sexual favours for accommodation. <laughs> you know, done some things I'm not proud of, but you know what I mean. Ne yeah, the struggle is real. The struggle is fucking real, you're right, you're right. <laughs> this is like the modern day whirlwind fairy tale romance. It's really very well this, this is what, this is what like, you know, the movie is going to be like in a few years' time. It's not going to be, you know, someone like crashes into someone ice skating or something. It's just going to be like just the opening, just the guy sat at his desk on his own, like swiping through Tinder and some bird comes along. Next you know minute. What? If somebody crashed into me while I was ice skating and then tried to shit on me, I would actually be very, very upset. Yeah, I think that's like. Like, I'm ice skating. I'm not there cool to though. Shit yeah, but. Oh, hey, 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 hey. You're not there to be hit on. You're fucking everywhere to be hit on. That is like, you know, <laughs> any anywhere you are, you are subject to approaches. That is just, you know, you are. That's just how the world works, man. I'm not fucking. I'm never gonna be thinking, oh shit, nah, I might skating, so uh, I might not, I might not go speak to that girl, man, because that's how you end up like lost and lonely at forty, like, you know, like wanking a lot. <laughs> You're still laughing at that one, yeah. <laughs> so you sound like you're from like Birmingham kind of way. Yeah. Yeah, obviously that's a massive deal you. breaker for me because we can't deal with the accent, but we can be mates. But you, can't, you can't deal with accent. Now we, I mean, don't get me wrong, like it can work out if we both start learning sign language now. <laughs> I have to stop telling people that I'm homeless. Yeah, well that's okay. You just come over here, just like winging it. Yeah, I was gonna see if there's any room in like the panda enclosure. Just because. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Yeah, I'm not allowed wet. You see, my mum said. Hey, tell me your life story anyway. Briefly, life like story. I don't want to know it all. Is it? 
Oh, oh gotcha. Fuck, I might hang up then. Alright, well, we have to dial tone. That's a good impression of a dial tone, isn't it? That was a shit impression. Fuck off! That come was on. Dodgy as shit. Hey, give me a fucking life story, come on. I've already asked you twice now. Melbourne, fell in love, got my heart broken, moved back to Sydney. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, just dropping in the got my heart broken as if it's like, yeah, I've got a cat, uh, don't, you know, that's it, you know, got my heart broken, shit. Oh, I, I mean, you, you looked quite cool, but I feel like your life story hasn't really lived up to expectations, but you know what? The good thing is, like, now you met Joe. So your life story got a lot fucking better, man. Like the next person you speak to on Tinder, you can be like, and then I was just sat there and like this guy came up to me on Tinder, absolutely blew my fucking mind, and like then your life story would be good. Mm, no. Oh. No. Oh. No. no. Okay. Shit. No, right. Tell me your life story, this. Well, briefly, obviously, no. I don't I don't want to know all. None of the boring shit. Like <laughs> nothing about like. Like heartbreak and like ex-boyfriends or anything like that. Oh, Just mainly yeah, about yeah, yeah. mainly like the bits that involve pandas. Pandai. Oh. What, what's the plural of panda? Is it panda? Probably doesn't even have pandas. What are you talking about? Right. Um. I want you to hang up now. Twenty-two. Yeah, I'm twenty-five, but oh, yeah. I look about like probably about twenty-one because um. I do this thing where I'll just have like avocado Wednesdays. I have like tzatziki Thursdays, it works as a face mask, you can get a really cheap one. You know like when I just rub avocado on my face for a full day. <laughs> just let it soak in and just rejuvenate the fuck oh, out of me. Nice. Yeah, so I've got like porcelain skin. Maybe I need to try that sometime. You should have a crack here, but the trouble is you have to leave it on for a full 24 hours, so you gotta like walk oh. out and sh like go to the shops oh, in it and stuff. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, avocado doesn't smell like nice after the first like 17 and a half hours as well. <laughs> That's the tipping point, man. Are you going to tell me your life story? Um, life story. Go. Born and raised in a small town just outside of Liverpool, northwest of England. That's my fucking life story. Apart from like, I didn't mention all like the, my like, like, there hasn't been any heartbreak, but well, not on my, <laughs> not, not on my side anyway. There has been one cat. She's dead. Yeah, no, it's cool, man. She's getting fucking annoying. I mean, I, I didn't kill her, like. Wow, really? Yeah, honestly, I wouldn't. Wow. I wouldn't kill a cat, man, unless it was nah, she wasn't that annoying. No. <laughs> All right, your last story wins ten points. Yeah. What's the best fucking animal? Um, I think yeah. Really All right, cool. Anyway, I I cut you off asking about Pandai. Um, I wanted to know your life story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the life story. Oh, shit. That's not... Are you like, are you far away from me? Because I'm pretty sure Tinder said like five miles and like, even then I thought that this is a bit of a push like because... Well, the only, the only mode of transport I actually own is a space hopper and that's semi deflated. Wow, this is, this is a long distance thing, isn't it? Could be, a, could be a good thing though, because then it's like, obviously when you get like massively into me and that, you don't, uh, you can't like try and see me all the time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll be like, well, yeah, well, I could have got rid of my other girlfriend in that time, couldn't I, so it'd be sweet. Don't know where, don't know where I'd put the kids though. This has been a successful phone call. <laughs> I feel like this is going well. I feel like I can ask you to be like my um, to be in a long-term committed monogamous relationship with me at the end of this phone call, and then we can both uninstall Tinder, and then we can buy a zoo. You wanna buy a zoo? Yeah, yeah. I've got this like, like right now, I can like see myself in the mirror, and I've got this like one single curl, it's like dangling down in the middle of my forehead. And it's like fucking. Why are you standing in front of the mirror when you're on the phone? It's like, well, I'm always in front of the mirror. I'll just check that I'm still attractive all the time. <laughs> anyway, I'm telling you about this curl, right? It's fucking enchanting, but I feel like you're not taking me, uh, my story seriously. How do you feel about lads with like really cute curly hair? Do I like that? How do you feel about lads with like really cute golden enchanting curls? 
Yeah. Oh no, I just got a meet. I thought I'd set you up with him because he's he's literally into animals and stuff like that. Mm. Why do you want to call anyway? Uh, I just like I like this. I just like doing that conversation thing. It's just like traditional, isn't it? Really traditional guy. Yeah, I like I open doors for girls as well. You know what I'm kicking them out. Oh, if anyone asks, we met, where where did we fucking meet? I fell into the like sea lion enclosure, and then I was like, I was all like, they didn't look so big from up there. And then, and then you saved me. What? Your roommate told me the curly hair guy Oh no, he hasn't really got curly hair, and I wasn't really trying to hook you up. But it was, it was, it was one of the many jokes that didn't land. Because I, I do this thing where like I tell jokes, and about thirty percent of them hit, and the rest of them just go wildly amiss. However, okay. the other thing what I was about to say actually is that I actually do have a friend called Tom, like moderately not a very attractive one, and we have this thing called the referral scheme. So, you get a photo of so I just provide like yeah yeah I'll send you some pictures on the WhatsApp. I'll, I'll just dig around and see if I've got a photo of his dick somewhere. Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> face is good for now. Uh, face yeah, I was just I wasn't I wasn't fully serious about the dick pic. Especially when it said dig around, because there's one as my background, so. <laughs> yeah, let's forget it, you know, I don't care. He can, he can, da yeah, he is, like, listen, right, I'm not having him, I'm not having him steal another girl off me. He is English, but you won't like him, because he's uh, got one foot. Yeah, he's got another as well, I'm just saying. He has got that one. <laughs> what we'll do is, um arrange a rendezvous point where I'll pluck my eyebrows and then um, come and meet you and put on a really nice British accent and like try and be charming and stuff and you can just bring me a, a locket of panda hair to charm me. Um, are you bringing Tom? Nah, uh, well I wasn't going to but I can if you're afraid that, <laughs> I mean I can if you want to bring someone. <laughs> Myself, I'm gonna bring my yeah, alright, let's stick with no. I was totally joking about the Tom thing and now I feel like it's it's um it's gone way, way too far. Yeah. Uh, actually however, um in like a couple of weeks it's my friend's birthday and she's got a hotel in the city and she'll probably need like the Tom. Yeah, um okay, that works out very well. Well you have to message me or something. Yeah, alright, we can, you know, go to the beach or something, yeah? Yeah, we'll do that real life thing. Yeah. All right, sweet. See you later, Emily. All right, see you later. Ciao. Bye. Bye. All right, listen. I'm saying that we arrange some kind of real life uh, appointment between me and you, where, like, I look at your head in real life and you look at mine, <laughs> and then we judge if they're like passable or or what. Sure, why not? I can judge your curls. All right, sweet. Um, I don't know what my schedule's like for this week, but I'll uh, send you an SMS. Alright, right, cool, I'll speak to you soon. Later. Joe Eulani is my hero!